Good morning, SeaWorld. How are we doing? Hey, another round of applause for our fantastic icebreaker dancers. Bringing the energy this morning. Hey, today is a huge day for SeaWorld Orlando as we finally open icebreaker. Going back to 2018, when we sat down and looked at the design aspects of what we wanted to do, we had a couple key objectives in mind. First, we want to continue expanding the park for what attractions were to come and what have since opened. Going back to 2016, we opened Mako, which has been voted as the number one roller coaster in the United States. <laughs> then we went further this way. We opened up Infinity Falls. I would say I'm a little biased, but the best river adventure ride in the entire world. And then... We went down the street to Sesame Street land in 2019. But we knew we were missing something, and that's where this realm and icebreaker come in. We have a reimagined glacial bar. We have a brand new altitude burger, and of course, icebreaker. In talking to our guests, and especially our past members, we knew we needed a launch coaster. And not only is it a launch coaster, it's a quadruple launch coaster. So when you start out, you launch backwards. There's not enough energy. The anticipation's building. You fall forward and launch forward. Still not enough speed. Then you launch backwards up Florida's tallest beyond vertical spike. You're coming slightly out of your seats. The airtime is ridiculous. You launch forward 52 miles an hour over 13 airtime hills, which for you coaster enthusiasts is more than Mako. Lots of low maneuvers, tight twists and turns before returning back to the station. But we didn't stop there with a the launch coaster. The next thing is we wanted it to be family thrill. So we have a 48 inch height requirement. So if you're a coaster enthusiast, don't turn your nose up at that. It's still a thrilling ride, and it packs a punch. It will exceed your expectations. But this could be a first coaster for a young child. It's a family coaster. It's smooth. It's repeatable. It's a whole lot of fun. When you get off Icebreaker, you can go right over to Wild Arctic. Only here at SeaWorld can you ride an amazing attraction and then go get up close with beluga whales, walruses, and seals. And here at SeaWorld, we really take conservation, rescue, rehabilitation seriously. And with this project, we are pleased to announce we are partnering with the Alaska Sea Life Center. And joining me this morning is the president and CEO of the Alaska Sea Life Center, Tara Reamer. Tara. Thank you, Rob. And thanks to all of you for being here. I am so excited to be here, not just because it is not 34 degrees and raining, but also, um, this is just such an amazing event. Uh, so as Rob said, I'm Tara Reamer from the Alaska Sea Life Center. Uh, we're located in Seward, Alaska, which is a small town two hours south of Anchorage, or three if you drove up in the ice storm on Tuesday like I did. Um, we probably see our visitation two weeks of people coming to this park is our annual visitation. So we don't see nearly as many uh, visitors here, we also only have Alaska species. We are a visitor aquarium, a public aquarium, the only one in Alaska. We also have a wildlife response program and a similar rescue mission to SeaWorld. We are the only responder to marine mammals in, in the entire state of Alaska. We also have a research program where we focus on marine mammals and seabird research. So when I first heard about the concept for this, um, I was a little skeptical. Ice, Florida, Alaska partnership. Um, how much could SeaWorld Orlando and the Alaska Sea Life Center really have in common? I flew 4,001 air miles to get here, crossed four time zones, and Seward is at latitude 60 degrees north. We're at about 28 and a half here, right? Um, but what we have in common is the commitment to what really matters, the commitment to the oceans, 
the commitment to the animals who live in those oceans. And so that's a common mission of both SeaWorld and the Alaska Sea Life Center, and one that we consider very, very important. It's the ocean in Florida, it's the same ocean that's in Alaska. And we're also both committed to sharing our conservation initiatives with our guests. So that's something that everyone who comes to SeaWorld hopefully learns about as well as in Alaska. But because so many people, more people come to SeaWorld, we're super excited that the visitors and the riders on the icebreaker will get to learn about what we do in Alaska. So I wanna tell you a little story, a, a little bit about the connection that's already existed between SeaWorld sea and the Alaska Sea Life Center. In 2017, on September 30th, we rescued a baby beluga whale from Kicking Lit, Alaska. This little guy was incredibly sick and taking care of a beluga whale takes about four people around the clock. So if you think normal shifts, that's 12 people a day. When we got this little boy back to Seward, the phone calls went out. Some of those phone calls first came to SeaWorld and we had staff flying up there nearly immediately to help. Um, and typically, so the reason we could do this is because the staff, the animal care staff at SeaWorld have the same training that our staff do and the same commitment to the high standards of animal care. Uh, so basically they came up and worked right alongside our staff. Now they didn't let me help a lot, but they did let me count. They let me count beluga breaths because one of the things about taking care of belugas when they're really sick is you have to count their respiration rate every hour. And I'm qualified for that. I am not qualified for taking care of those animals otherwise, but the SeaWorld staff that came up did a wonderful job and we really do partner on a regular basis. So again, I just wanna say thank you for, to SeaWorld for involving us, for being the conservation partner with this amazing new ride. I'm so excited to be here. I haven't been on a roller coaster for a long time, but it's gonna to happen today. So thank you so much, everybody.